Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. My name is Ray Hewart. It's Friday. I have Katie Miglin with me. And apparently there are some stories to talk through this week. Um, I'm not outing her, but like Katie has a black eye and it's Teacher Appreciation Week and it's beautiful outside. I've been dreaming about school again. We'll be back. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Teach Better Today Morning Show. We're currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And as a reminder, because it's Friday, friends, our Sunday weekly warm up for the entire month of May is exclusive on YouTube on Sunday night. So go over, make sure you're subscribed to the Teach Better Team on YouTube so you can catch that show on Sunday evenings. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Katie Miglin, how you doing? How was your week? <laughs> Happy Friday, friends. It has been, oh, it's just been a great, wonderful week. I'm so excited to catch up with you because I feel like I haven't talked to you much. Right. And we were like kind of catching up before we clicked the big red button. And then you were like, oh, did you notice my black eye? And in my head, I was like, oh, thank God she says something. Yes. I was like, I don't know if it's a shadow because obviously I don't see you in person very often. We live like very far apart. So I'm like, maybe it's a shadow. Maybe it's makeup. You have like a little bit of a little bit of something. Yep. Right there. I do. I do. It's a funny story. Um, have mm-hmm. you ever had a black eye before? Mm, not this. No, not really. I guess. I guess this is probably the worst. So it's a pretty pretty funny story. Um, and this was like a while ago. So like, this is lingering. I was on a field trip with my middle child and we had a great day. It was beautiful, like fun field trip. And I went to lean in to give her a kiss goodbye, but she wasn't facing me. And she turned her head like just right. And we collided. So I'm like the best mom ever. Cause she literally like got on the bus crying because her head hurt. And I, cause I like reacted and I was like, Oh, Stella, like, cause it hurt. And so then she like felt bad, but also her head hurt. And I was like, bye, I love you. And I didn't honestly think it was that bad. I think she hit it just right. Yeah. And so, yeah, now I have a black eye. So out of curiosity, did like, after all this happened, after she came home from school, then was she like, mom, what'd you do to your face? Well, it was like the next day she, like, it was like, I woke up and, you know, you're like tired or whatever. And you could tell she was like staring at me. And I was like, are you looking at my black eye? <laughs> because it had started to like swell. And I was like, that was from yesterday when we bonked heads. And so then she like felt really bad. And I was like, it's not your fault. I just, I'm just telling you. So her head is fine. Just I'm I'm glad her head is fine because Stella mm-hmm. and I have a have a special bond and I need her to stay healthy. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know that I've had a black eye. Even when I've been hit in the face, I don't think it's really gotten black and blue. Like I haven't been hit hard enough. But you're right. right. If there's like a certain way that they hit you, mm-hmm. and um, this is like like I have a fair amount of makeup on top of this. <laughs> You should make up a really good story. If you're in the comments this morning, give us Ooh, like yeah. a like a five word sentence that like describes what what description you would have. Like when I used when I had shoulder surgery and I had scars, I'd be like, oh, I got in a ninja fight, right? You have to like come up with something fun. You should tell people you got in like a crazy bar fight. Yeah, but then people will be like, you're a mom of three. That doesn't sound, nothing about that story sounds real. Like, I need to almost be like, I got attacked by a squirrel or, you know, like something. A, a squirrel, you're missing the point of this. You want, to, you want it to sound epic. Like, you got attacked by a coyote, maybe? Oh, okay. Okay, so it's the animal needs to be. I just thought, you know, a squirrel would be funny. Like, who gets yeah, attacked? But- the, the whole story in and of itself, the fact that you have a black eye is funny enough. You need to have an epic story, whether it you need it to be somewhat believable. 
Like okay. just a little. Where they're Sorry, like, drop it in the comments. What animal yeah. could I have gotten in a fight with that seems believable, but also kind of like, you know, badass? No, yeah. I'm thinking like you were out on a walk with the kids and one of them was riding their bike and you're just like down the street. All of a sudden this mean dog gets out of the yard and you have to like push the kids away and put like save them from this <laughs> This okay. big, let's, like, let's have there's better ideas in the comments. <laughs> man, man. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a dream about it. Apparently I'm really into dreaming these days. So I'm, I I'm will dream up your story. This is not August. Come on. You have dreams in August about like losing post-its or not having a Sharpie or something. Like we can't go back on this. Here's my issue, friends. And if you've been a listener of the Teach Better Today morning show all season, you know that my dreams about school seem to be like... Like they're nightmares. They are not dreams about school. I am waking up in like a heavy sweat panic. Um, this one, it, it always has the same characters. It is always the like I'm back in the same stuff. Like it's not like new. Trevor Chapman, still the principal in my dream. So Trevor um, Chapman, shout out to him. Yep, shout out to Trevor Chapman. He was my principal for a, a bit of time in my career, but uh he was the principal in this one and I was still back at Evans Junior High, which is where I used to work, even though it, it doesn't look like Evans Junior High, but everyone who works there is the same, but the building is different. And yeah, I was talking to Nikki. Nikki is a good friend of ours that I used to work with. I was the math teacher. She was the reading teacher. And we were trying to figure out behavior management strategies of like students being able to like, you know, it's we were literally in, in like a PBIS meeting. <laughs> Tears. Okay. Like tier one PBS meeting of like, okay, so students acting out or jumping on the table or like, and you want to send them out of class. What are like the steps? Like, please step into the hallway. That could be one step down to the office to take a break. We are going to create little cards. So you could like hand a student a card that had the directions of your expectations when they left the, left the room. I am really stressed because I did not finish designing the cards in my dream. And then I woke up and I'm like, what will what will Nikki do? What will happen of those cards? No one's going to finish them. They were like kind of interesting. Like I woke up and I was like, maybe that would work in teaching. Like there was three different sets of cards that essentially was like step in the hallway, like take a breather or like mm -hmm. you need a reset, walk down to the office, tell like show them this card. You're not in trouble, but you need to like sit for a second. I don't know. It was like. They were very, like they're elementary. like, yeah, they have those. They're like, you know, uh, what do they call them? Like de escalating strategy cards or whatever. Like they're, yeah. yeah, mindful minutes. We were creating them. Yes. It was that kind of vibe where it was like a card where they had permission to be doing laps around the hallways to like get some energy out. And like you could show the card and then people weren't like able to get the kid in trouble type thing. Okay. Well. It was really stressful because there was a lot oh, of arguing awesome. and there was a lot of people in the dream that I had previously worked with that were not in favor of the idea. So we were like in this heated debate. about it. I'm just really sorry you had to go through that. Um, <laughs> Friends, I just need help. Like it's May. Are any of you still having nightmare teaching experience dreams? Like, I don't know what this, this is new this year. Like this is, yeah, this is a new thing for you. And they're vivid, and I remember them. I'm still mad. You brought up the post-it one. We could go back to that episode and re-listen to that horror fest. Please no. Please no. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get into some teacher talk, team talk. Teaching. Oh, is this like one of those things where it's like not cool when people tell you your dreams because people don't care? No, I just, I don't know how to help you because like the card. If you want to finish making those cards today, if that's going to help you sleep tonight, like I'm happy to support you. I just... I don't, know how, I don't know how to help you. So then you would need PBIS cards. I will make them. They're in my brain already. They're already designed. We'll be right back.
Hey, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us here on the Teach Better Today morning show. We have a listener question. Katie, what you got for us? Well, this uh, comes from some wonderful educators in Illinois. We were discussing last week how uh, wonderful the weather has been and how it's been here, at least in Illinois, it's been like abnormally warm some days. I know my own children are like, you know, dying to get the pool up and going. And so I was joking with some um, administrators about like, I was always the teacher that looked for opportunities to be outside. And so we kind of just started talking about how can you appropriately be outside? Because we know that sometimes it can be seen as a free for all or a free day. And obviously that's not the intent. So I just thought we could kind of like brainstorm some ideas on like you're taking kids outside. What are some things you should do? I know Josh and I talk about weather all the time because our weathers are so different. But when, you know, when you're thinking of, oh my gosh, it's a gorgeous day. We've all had those days. You're driving into work and you're like, ugh, I do not want to be in a brick building all day long because it's gorgeous out. The sun is shining. We just have to remind ourselves like the kids are probably doing the same thing. The kids probably want to be outside. They want to enjoy it. Um, so I was notorious for getting into school and immediately thinking, how can I switch my lesson so that it's out, it can be outside? Notice I didn't just look for opportunities to go outside and play. I would try to take what I was going to teach, the activity we were going to do, whatever was like actually the, the academic plan and seeing if I could switch it outside. Sometimes instead of getting whiteboards in the classroom, I, they would get sidewalk chalk outside. Um, sometimes it was, we only would go outside for the mini lesson. I would just let them sit and soak up the sunshine while, you know, we went over it quickly. I would take like a portable whiteboard with me. Um, and other times it was like more of an independent day. If we were in the grid method, it was, you know, we, they were going to be working. So after the mini lesson, we would go outside. But the big thing I want to make sure that we cover is behaviors because sometimes we know students go outside and it's like, boom, let's go run around. So Ray, what would, what would be our like top things you would suggest to a teacher if she, if he or she is thinking, I'm going to go outside today. What are the things I need to tell my students? I love this clarification between going outside and being like, kids, you have free time, go run around and we're still in a learning environment. And I think yeah. setting those expectations before you get outside yeah. is the first step. You need to make sure that those expectations are clear, not only so the students' mindsets are in the right place, but also so they bring the right materials with them. That's going to be really mm -hmm. important. I also think this is a great reminder for students to kind of go over expectations and go over what happens when those expectations aren't met. Mm -hmm. So this is like a good baseline to kind of clarify all those things. Um, for me, Katie, I think once you get outside, it's really just about once you've set those expectations, being consistent and allowing students to spread out and still soak up all the positives of being mm -hmm. outside. What comes to mind for you? A uh, big thing is I felt like I had to live and learn um, Wi-Fi. If you are relying on technology, there were certain parts of the outdoors that, that they had stronger service than others. So if I needed them to have their computers, I had to be mindful of where those spaces were. But I also had to allow students to kind of move a little bit to get better service. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is I was really clear that if it didn't work for a particular class, it wasn't happening the next day. So, you know, I would always look in like, OK, we've got five days of what's presumably going to be gorgeous weather. I would tell them we can come out every day. You can handle it. So, you know, we'd go out on Monday. Behaviors were great. We got a lot done. Wonderful. Let's go out Tuesday. If Tuesday we struggled and we were more off task and it was more I was managing behaviors rather than in teaching then Wednesday, we didn't go out and they kind of had to have a reset pause. They had to earn their way back out. And I felt like that was really good. The students got kind of into that rhythm of like they knew to hold each other accountable. It stopped being an, an issue for me. Um, and so that was really helpful. But yeah, like bringing all the supplies and also like thinking through, do you need them to bring all of their stuff? Like, you know, our, our old building, we had like the common areas outdoors were near the hallways. So it made more sense for them to take all their stuff out of my classroom. So then when that bell rang, they could just be released to their next class versus having to go back to my classroom. Or on the flip side, as a teacher, are there supplies you're bringing outside yeah, to make right. it easier? So like yeah. you mentioned, bringing on a whiteboard. I love bringing out like a class set of clipboards. That's always yeah. really easy. Mm -hmm. What if they need a pencil? Are you going to bring any extras? Um, I think that's kind of nice. I used to, I would just, I would encourage everyone to just cut kind of like an outdoor work bin 
Yeah. Cornmeal, but like, I'm going to grab the quartz are in there and then I'm going to throw like three pencils or a, a, mm-hmm. a whiteboard and some Mexico markers. Um, I think it's great to be outside. I think it's great to have all these positives. I think, again, just clarifying the boundaries and clarifying the expectations mm-hmm. and for what you just shared, really holding them accountable. I like that you're setting up the vision of what you're hoping to see as a teacher and then wanting them to be accountable for that opportunity, I think is really important. Sometimes mm-hmm. I find as educators, we we don't really paint a picture of our expectations and then we get you know frustrated when students don't meet those expectations and maybe we react in a in a way that then doesn't allow us to to recover well so trying to find those ways again i think this is like optimal optimal Mm -hmm. transparency for for this vision Uh, kind of the last thing i would say is make sure you've communicated to anyone who needs to know where you're you're located so like you know, the expectation in our building was we always had to call the main office to let them know. Um, we, I always like to let the custodian know too, just in case like a door got shut and, you know, some kid got locked out. Um, I also would take all my hall passes in case a kid did need to use the restroom or go somewhere. Then I had those hall passes and I was ready for them to go. Um, so just kind of thinking through all those little logistics, like how can you set up an outdoor space for yourself? And so maybe this weekend, as you go into Saturday and Sunday, maybe you like pick up some sidewalk chalk, you create a little bin, you get some stuff so that next week you can utilize your outdoor spaces, but do make sure that you check with other people who might be using the space, PE classes or other teachers, just so that your students can actually focus and you can actually create that learning environment outdoors. I love it. Katie, we also mentioned in previous episodes that while you might pick up resources like Sidewalk Chalk, this is also the perfect time in the year to send an email to families or email to community members saying, hey, you might be buying some new Sidewalk Chalk for this season for your own family. If you have anything left over that you want to donate to our classroom, we're always in need for Sidewalk Chalk. So let us know. Such Lots of good stuff here. Friends, we'd love to hear how you are celebrating the good weather with your students in the mm-hmm. comments. So please feel free to take a screenshot or um, tag us in posts of opportunities that you've had to celebrate student learning. And it'll be a great Friday ahead. Also, before I forget, it's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Julie. Happy birthday, Julie. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Happy Mother's Day, too. Oh, my God. We forgot. There's so many things. We can talk about that Monday, I guess. Happy Mother's Day. Happy my mom's birthday. And happy last day of teacher appreciation. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. 